you consider yourself to be a hardcore scientist or a scientist and an artist at the same time? I, w I would say the latter, yeah. but uh, yeah, probably I'm more of a scientist for sure. Okay, so this is cool because we're talking about wellness technology and how do you think, Justin, like artism plays its role in like how you came out with the Axon and mm. what this means? Like being an artist and, and moving yeah. in technology. No, you know? that's an interesting question because I feel like that was m the main driver for, uh, at first you got to be inspired. You have to have some sort of muse and, um, you know, just, just doing, uh, you know, personal training for as long as I had been doing, um, you, you start to you start to try and get creative and, and make the process a little more enjoyable for your clients. And so my brain was just constantly thinking of things like improving different exercises or uh, trying to come up with ways to find uh, some new stimulus where I could kind of focus on that. It was just helpful to uh, keep it enjoyable and keep my clients coming back in and focused on other things. And so, yeah, dude, I, I had, um, I had gone through quite a few ideas before I even came up with this one, but um, this this is one of those things where I had to be in the right place at the right time to get inspired by it, and then all of a sudden, boop, this like light bulb hit me, and um, and then I told one of my clients about it, who's a patent attorney, and then boom, we started to kind of brainstorm together. So. Yeah. And, and there's this crossroads right now, which we have all these cool devices. I feel like we're going to totally dork out today. Oh, my God. Um, yeah. But I do. I want you guys to know, like for Wellness Force, that people don't know anything about you. Um, my good buddy, Yaron Haddad, he's the uh, chief scientist and the co-founder of Neutrino, which is a really awesome app uh, that's already out. Mm. And it's more than an app. It's actually uh, helping public health policy, which is really cool. Uh, and then Justin Andrews, who yeah. you know him from Mind Pump. We had a really awesome episode already. Yeah, this is but, part um, two, buddy. This is this is round two. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you're on. Tell us about you, man, a little bit. Uh, sure. So first of all, uh, in terms of my uh, my background, so I'm a, I'm a scientist by education. I'm a theoretical physicist and a mathematician. I did research on general relativity, and still do physics research. Real on light the side. stuff. Yeah. Well, coffee, <laughs> table, <laughs> coffee table, coffee table. Yeah, yeah, real light reading. Yeah, yeah. You know, weekend activities. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, and I co-founded a company called Neutrino. Um, we are a company that focuses on uh, personalized nutrition. We invented a concept that we call footprint, which is like the digital signature of how different foods affect your body. Mm. And we try to help people identify how their body responses to different foods and help them eat better according to their own individual physique which i loved i, I was love immediately so gravitated yeah, <laughs> yeah towards what he was doing because it's just like oh my god now finally somebody that can make this more individualized and and, and custom to you know each person because you know how many variables are out there you know person to person so and yeah, genetic was wise genetic mm -hmm. wise i yep. mean like everything we've learned in the past five years i remember five years ago i was a metabolic typing practitioner where mm. I, you know if you were a fast oxidizer or a slow oxidizer you would get certain types of foods but then jane down the street would get different foods right so now we have this way do you feel like in the nutrition field we have this way to really get a genetic sequence to see like what's the best food for someone to actually eat based on their genetic expression and also their epigenetics. What's going on there? Yeah, I think uh, genetic is super interesting and we, we actually started doing stuff related to nutrigenomics uh, in the last few months. I don't think it's the full, uh, it's, it's the entire story, obviously. Hmm. There is much more to it and I can explain why it cannot be the entire story, actually. Um, but uh, yeah, in general, I think that uh, today for the first time, we got to the, to the point in which we can collect a lot of data about individuals, most of it even practically, like pretty passively, so they don't need to uh, worry too much about uh, mm -hmm. manually tracking too many things um, and try to un identify how different foods affect their bodies. And this is really kind of like a milestone both for science and for nutrition, uh, kind of like as an industry. There mm -hmm. is a lot that could be done that could, we couldn't have done, uh, say, 10 years ago. Yeah, Kit, I mean, what I was so impressed by with his platform is just how many different things you incorporate into your platform. I mean, it's you're incorporating wearables, you know, so step counts, you're like HRV, like you've looked at 23andMe, like these kinds of factors, like even microbiome. Like, can you explain all these different uh, things you actually- Just like the dream dashboard. Yeah, like you, <laughs> yeah. you sought it out and brought all the best stuff in one place. Sure, I mean, it's still, and I guess always a work in progress, but- uh, 
We kind of think of this idea of footprint as being like a layered concept. Uh, so there are a lot of different inputs that could go into it. So first of all, Neutrino as a company uh, cares about anything that might either be affected by nutrition or may affect metabolism. Now, as you know, obviously, this practically means everything, right? Everything related to health. Right. Um, so we've been, uh, we created this platform that collects a, a lot of different data from a lot of different inputs. Uh, today, we have over 100 different data streams that we're collecting. So I'll just mention a few, but it's uh, information, obviously information about nutrition, physical activity, sleep data, uh, trying to collect those uh, passively through wearable devices information from medical devices. So one of my favorites, continuous glucose monitors, mm. uh, information from insulin pumps for people who are living with diabetes and are using insulin pumps, information about uh, like medical records, blood tests, genetics, heart rate variability, temperature, menstrual cycle, and, and, uh, and more. Actually. Wow, God, man, like I can't think of anything else. <laughs> yeah. what, what else do we really need right now? Because I think a lot of people understand tech, and this is what I'm like really stoked to get in with you guys on. Yeah. Everybody sees the data sets, but then what do you do once you have the data? Like, mm. okay, I walked 10,000 steps, so the fuck what? Right. <laughs> what, what do you do now? Yeah, you or, need hey, a program. Yeah, I got my 23andMe, I got it sequenced through you know, Prometheus, and I understand that I have this certain genotype, but now what? What do you guys feel about crossing this bridge between having the data and then knowing what to do with it? Um, I, th I feel like that's a definite important thing to consider because you can get biofeedback in so many different forms, but if it's not something that you're actually applying towards improvement and you're consistent with and, uh, and you're really paying attention and tracking, because I know a lot of people will wear things just because it's cool. And, you know, yeah. it's you like get the new Apple Watch, Ooh, it's new technology, you know, and you get yeah. excited about it. And I'm yeah. totally guilty of this. Right. Because I love gadgets and I, I love, you know, all this yeah. stuff. But, um, you know, there, there's been a few things that if I'm actually training clients, I know um, I'm going to get great result from just from them really focusing on it. And um, step count was a big one because I feel like a lot of people really don't understand how little they move at certain points of the day or on the weekend, you know, perhaps. And and then also along with that, like the movement isn't there. But then again, their eating habits, you know, also like it's this perfect storm of like, you know, on the weekends or, you know, it's like most people get kind of caught up into this where. Um, they're not moving. They're they're making you know worse you know eating decisions, yeah. and um, and then they they're, they're trying to figure this out throughout the week, and they're trying to hustle through workouts, and they're trying to um, do good, do good, do good. But when, when all I have to do is little micro tweaks, um, that you know they they will see almost immediate benefit from. So I, I feel like there's there's few things, um, and you and you want to really kind of limit it to. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that you have to limit it, but like, you know, one to three things is a good yeah. kind of a focus point. Um, you know, if you're getting proper sleep, um, you know, if you're drinking adequate amounts of water, um, um, you know, little, little small achievable things like that. And, um, just kind of start with there and see if you, you're consistent and sleep. So it's like eat, move, sleep because our thoughts, feelings, and actions, they get adjusted to do those things more efficiently. But if we're not eating and moving and sleeping, just doing like the basic fundamental <laughs> things that we it all so deserve to, to do as a human. That, like yeah. <laughs> how crazy is it that the same technology that's made us sedentary, that's taken us away from being active and eating, moving, and sleeping, we're now on the other side of the sword where it's mm. cutting and it's giving us back mm -hmm. the accountability that it took away from us. I feel like this duality exists right now. Yeah, that, I think that's the exciting part. It's like, okay, we realize the like we've caught everybody with this new technology like yeah. there's there's just this sort of negative uh, aura around technology because we've been so uh, like focused on it and we realize there's addictive properties to it um, but it's not going away and you know we can actually start um, repurposing that 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 same platform and in, in creating outlets to have people do healthier things like get better sleep uh, move be more active um, just just the thought process around it you can kind of <laughs> take that sort of addictive quality and now let's let's spread that out and do something positive with it and i want to come back to you too man because you have so many years in health and fitness oh my god and yeah. uh we kind of had this conversation about what needs to change in the fitness industry which you guys talk about so much on mind pump yeah but i want to learn a little bit more about your background you're on because mm -hmm. you're a chief you're a data scientist you had a health journey of your own 
you went through quite the transformation. Yeah. Uh, can you share that with us, man? Because it was for me on the phone. I was I took a breath. It was a really interesting story. Uh, sure. Um, thank you. Yeah. Um, so I used to suffer from a lot of different health related problems when I was younger. Um, at some point, it just drove me literally crazy. I I was trying to do whatever I could uh, in order to fix that. And I got exposed kind of like to the world of nutrition. I started reading about nutrition. And I remember reading the first book and it recommended eating in a certain way. And I tried. I actually avoided dairy products. Uh, I was 16 at the time. And within a few weeks, I started feeling so much better. All of a sudden, complete life change. And that was fascinating. And I had to understand how can something so simple mm. can make such a big impact on my quality of life. Yeah. So I remember going with my dad to the local bookstore. He was cool enough to just buy me like all the books in the nutrition shelves, like more than 30 books. I read all of them. And as you know, in the world of nutrition, every single book tells you, you know, practically to uh, eat differently. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't know what to do, so I actually decided to just try it. I kind of like could do like an N equal one, N equals one self experimentation. And I tried 24 diets for about three and a half years. 24 diets? Yep. Wow, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> you went all in, man. <laughs> yeah. Got a little carried away with this all one. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, how long did you spend uh, on each diet? It changed, but uh, at least a month for okay. uh, for all That's of them. That's a pretty good time trial. Yeah. Yeah. Thirty yeah. days, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For some of them, I, I give them like four shot. months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and I've been uh, so eventually. What worked best for me, and I, I, I like to say that worked w well for me. It doesn't mean necessarily it will work well for everybody. Uh, but uh, was a what worked best was a vegan diet. So I've been a vegan uh, since so since I was nineteen, uh, hmm. since two thousand and one. Um, way before it was popular in any way. <laughs> Are you raw vegan, 100% or just vegan? Just vegan, okay. not raw vegan. Got it. So what happened then with your breakthrough where you found that, what ma What was the bridge between you going, oh my gosh, I've found health, I'm a vegan, now I'm gonna create this company that's gonna serve millions of people. I mean, that's like, like an overnight <laughs> thing. Yeah, so um, a few years after that, so I started studying, I studied math and physics. I was always fascinated by the applications of mathematics in general and and science to technology and i i i was always like i kept being uh kind of like trying to be on top of what's hap happening in nutrition and while i was in grad school i was looking at the nutrition literature and the, and the industry in general and it felt like it's still not shifting and i was like this doesn't make any mm -hmm. sense this has to it has to change uh the way it works or the way um it used to work, and now there are a lot of companies trying to make this shift, which I'm very happy about. Um, it didn't represent what it is that, uh, like, humanity could do for nutrition. Um, so at some point, I started as a as a project just for fun with uh, with Jonathan uh, Jonathan Lipnick, who is my partner in Neutrino. And at some point, it actually turned into a company, and I decided not to continue in academia and not to do a postdoc. I had some postdoc offers uh, in physics and. Uh, yeah, and just decided to do it full time. Man, this is blowing, <laughs> this is blowing me away because it all—it's almost like it found you. Like you said, I didn't really know it was going to happen. This came, th this came through you. Yeah. So now, what are you trying to achieve? Like, what's your number one mission? If you could snap your fingers and overnight it appeared, what would that look like? Um, so stated, kind of like formally for the, like the the mission of Neutrino, and this is really my passion is to what I like to say to call to solve the problem of conflicting nutritional advice. So to help people find a source or sources for reliable information about nutrition, that it will also represent the fact that we can actually measure for the first time in history mm -hmm. how foods affect their bodies. That's um, powerful, man. Yeah. <laughs> so I love powerful. that. Yeah. Oh, so that I've been waiting for this. You know? That's like. the ultimate tweetable right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I'm also thinking about, too, like I know at San Diego State, I've walked the halls there. It's sponsored by Kellogg's. It's sponsored by yeah. these companies that have a direct interest on what the academia is actually uh. teaching. So the curriculum is funded right. by companies. Now, you don't have to be a conspiracy theorist to make the connection. No, all you got to do is follow the money. And follow I mean, the money. Unfortunately, there's that part of it, right? And that's that's where a lot of the misinformation comes from, and just the lack of real scientific 
you know, uh, you know, scientists coming in and, and really taking all of these uh, uh, variables and, and, and really like taking it in a lab setting and, and doing due diligence with it and not, you know, ha being funded by, you know, a specific company A and, uh, you know, shenanigan wise. So we've been battling this stuff, like even on mind pump. So this is this has been like one of our big big uh topics to, that constantly comes up um, have you talked about what the health yet yes we have okay yeah, yeah. All right, we'll, we'll just link that in the show notes. yeah we'll yeah, link yeah. that in the show you notes. can go <laughs> check it out on mind pump uh we get real real on that episode um but yeah just it just gets frustrating because you want people to have good information and you really want them to um not get strayed into this this trap and and you just see this like uh, i saw this like consistently with all my clients i would have them hooked and consistent and doing healthy things and um you know really enjoying the process and then you would get some um stupid article or something you know from you know health magazine you know where it would come out where so and so is doing this um this sort of you know starvation technique that you know involves cayenne peppers and now i have to explain why yeah. you know it's probably not a good idea <laughs> right so ah, it's just man it's just like the misinformation so to have somebody like you kind of you know coming in from his background in in, in science and taking um, you know, real tangible metrics that we can like prove like, look, you know, this is this is what's really going on when you're eating this. And um, I, oh, I'm so excited about that, man. And I'm stoked to talk about Axon and how this plays into the wellness wheel, because we're all looking at quantification. Yeah. So yeah. the numbers don't lie. Your neighbor might <laughs> what the health might lie. But yeah. the, but the data, the quantification of data doesn't lie. So on the table, we have a few devices. There's a recovery device uh, from a company called PowerDot. There's this new device that I want to talk to you guys about called Ooh. Neurovalence Modius. And it activates the vestibular nerve, which then downregulates our appetite. So it upregulates leptin. Very, uh, very and then there's the muse right here um, for meditation. Now, you're on. Tell us about this one because it almost looks like a tricorder from Star Trek. <laughs> what is that? Uh, Sayo is a, is a mini spectrometer that can measure nutritional information of food by scanning it. Wow. You yeah. can scan it. Within like 90% yeah. accuracy? Or what's the accuracy on it? Um, so I won't uh, state any, any accuracies. This is their okay, product. Okay. But mm. uh, yeah. Wow. Think about how disruptive this Th is. This right? table contains enough brain power that would have fueled five spaceships in the <laughs> 1960s. Seriously, yeah. right? Yeah. And there's a cell phone there too. So it's like we look at how we can combine these data sets. Um, tell us about the Axon, man. Wh where was this genesis from that? And also give people um, a little background on the training. We were both mm. trainers at 24. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they already heard uh, a little bit about your story on the episode where we did in Austin. Oh, yeah. Um, but tell people a little bit about your background and the bridge to create Axon. Yeah, I mean, I've been a personal trainer for well over 12 years or so now. And um, like I I went through like I, I was a junkie for getting um, new knowledge and that was looking for the latest and greatest modality that was out there. And so um, I, I'm on the show. I'm kind of more on mind pump. I'm, I'm, I'm the host. that's a little more interested in like unconventional training and um, was really introducing a lot of mobility concepts uh, to the to the guys. Um, and we've been it's been an awesome process because I, I've, I've been sort of removed from the bodybuilding world and from. Uh, physique and all you know that kind of a, a setting and to be able to kind of influence that setting and and show them like hey here's some techniques and here's you know some mobility practices that you can include um, while you're also pursuing these other you know interests um, this is going to benefit your whole body and um, you know help to um, you know get integrity in your joints and you know all these aches and pains and things like that you can avoid and um, so just um, going through the process with that like I I was introduced um, to a concept. I've done yoga before and um, I actually, one of my friends, he did a stick yoga class and this was in Santa Cruz and uh, Dr. Fagenholtz, I believe, he came up with this whole concept um, based off of like using a, a bamboo stick that um, his actually, you can bend, but you can get in all these interesting yoga positions. And what was so fascinating about it was yoga tends to have sort of um, it's this interesting um, sort of exercise, right? Somebody has to hold a pose, but unless there's a mirror in front of them, are they holding it the specific way the instructor's yeah. showing them? And how is the instructor going to train 30 people at once? Yeah, and, and, yeah. and, and, and they're like, they're, they're trying to have this feedback. So a lot of times the instructor kind of has to come adjust them a little bit and try and put them in position. And they're, it's like this, this foreign object in their head. Like, how do I move my body like this? And 
but they know that they have to get back and rotate a little bit to get into that position. Um, but anyway, there was no real direction with it um, other than being able to watch what the instructor is doing. So what was interesting about this stick yoga class is like uh, now all of a sudden you have sort of an access point and I have an access point that I can sort of direct uh, my body into um, and then I can orient my body to rotate in a specific way um, to, you know, find that, find that position easier and then um, get into that position and, and sort of tense up and solidify that position. Um, and so that sort of led into uh, my friends that took the course. Um, they all kind of repurposed a lot of the ideas and, and also incorporated, because I, I come from more of a sports training background and these guys did as well. <clears throat> so they actually ended up incorporating a lot more of these athletic mobility type flexibility techniques. Um, and so it was cool. I went and I, and I was like seeing their thought process with it. And so I did a couple of their classes that they came up with and they created a whole system around it. Um, but there was something that really stuck out for me personally in the class. And um, I was doing certain moves and then I would get into isometric positions. And now I had a stick to um, really enhance that process and, and feel this, this overall muscular tension that I hadn't really felt because I wasn't really communicating on that level. I wasn't able to produce that intrinsically. Um, and this was the first time I was like, wow, wait, what? You know, it started to kind of, something clicked. Mm. And um, from then on, I, it just kind of stuck with me. I was like, wow, you know, what would be really great is and this is usually how people come up with you know inventions right so it was like it'd be really great if i really knew what force i was producing yeah you know to quantify like, right let's quantify this let's so were you seeing this something. with clients i mean because i can't tell you how many people might have had you know a plank or something they were trying to hold isometrically but yes. there's no way to quantify a plank no how do you do but that you know it's hard and you, you know but, things are happening but you know it's hard like like you might know on a weight stack there's 70 pounds 70 pounds is always going to be 70 pounds yeah. so you can multiply it by reps but with the axon what does that actually do i mean it measures the tension of the force output right yeah. so yeah all all of your intrinsic forces like so when i'm when I'm tensing my body up and then, um, you know, basically communicating to my body, I need to produce this to accomplish this movement or move this object, you know, away from my body. Um, you, you literally have to open up that communication process and get the neuromuscular, you know, recruitment process. And um, I kept thinking about that because bringing back to old NASM, you know, OPT yeah. model kind of days where, you know, it was great that they sort of started you off with that, right? The stabilization, strength, stabilization. and power. <laughs> yes, yes. For all the trainers listening, Thank which I you. think they added a new module, I believe. I'm not Did sure. Did they? I believe. I don't know. Uh, I'm out of the loop. Okay. But uh, yeah, so I was like, wow, th this is something that so many people just jump right over completely. And they never take the time to figure out how to produce certain movements, how to communicate that process more effectively. And what are um, the proper recruitment patterns that I want? What are the favorable ones? Um, and, you know, from there, that's what is the foundation. That's what's the core that we build off of. And, you know, a lot of people don't realize when they're doing exercises, um, you know, unless you build that communication line, like let's say I'm doing a row and um, I'm never really feeling that you know, my rhomboid, I'm never really getting that full shoulder retraction. Mm -hmm. I'm just pulling with my bicep and, and I'm, and I'm pulling, you know, effectively, my body gets really efficient in that movement because, you know, that's what I'm, 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 you know, I'm trying to get better. And I'm telling my body that this is a movement that I need to get stronger at, but you're getting stronger, uh, in the wrong place and, and you're, you're solidifying the wrong pattern. So, um, that's where I was just like, okay, whoa, like this is something that I can actually use as like corrective. This is something that I can use to teach people like from the very beginning, yeah. like, you know, here are the proper um, ways to, uh, you know, like recruit this, this process and, 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 and move in this direction and get your joints to, to work this way. Um, and then, you know, from there, you know, you can also use it for, for just workouts. And, and isometrics are an old technique that pre people pretty much forgot about. 
Yeah, and they're super effective. And uh, if you're listening to this, we're going to do a YouTube series where Justin's going to take us through some of these movements. But yeah, it's not just fun. isometrics. It's also mobility. Yes. So we've all done the PVC shoulder stretch where we put it over our head. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's some other fundamental, you know, some regular cat swings and things like this. But what are the key movements with this axon? Um, it looks rad, by the way. It's bamboo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that was your design. It looks so good. Yeah, they took a while to get to this point. So I'm actually really happy with this. Um, this is what it's going to end up looking like. <laughs> so, yeah. So some of the fu uh, fundamental movements, um, you know, for sure that that sold me on the concept uh, was the squat. And so just like pressing the stick up into an overhead position, like whether it's the frame of your door or maybe a low hanging ceiling, um, just to all of a sudden now irradiate and get that muscular tension uh, all over my body while I'm while I'm dropping down into a squat man it, it, it's it's very fascinating to, to feel how comfortable your body gets uh, in depth with that so it was a Ooh. great teaching um, exercise using the stick because I would see if, if they're really producing um, you know this this tension in this force that I want them to produce because that's something that you know, even as a trainer, if I'm coaching somebody in a squat, I'm like, okay, you know, if, if you're just doing a bodyweight squat, I want you to really squeeze and we're going to make, you know, you know, really emphasize the tension of this. Um, you know, it's something that I could say, but I can't really see. So yeah. um, that's been really helpful because I've noticed too, like just the joints are more comfortable. It, it, it puts them at ease uh, when, when you're that um, supported with, you know, your, your neuromuscular recruitment there. It's like, everything's okay. And so like even getting into depth gets easier. And it's logged. I mean, everything's in an app. So you can see over the course of 30 days or 60 days or 90 days, how someone's actually getting better. Yeah. Instead of just using weight as the measurement. So how does it help with posture though? I think most people, oh, probably eight out of 10 people suffer from poor posture. Oh, absolutely. Like just um, getting into, um, you know, better p positions um, and getting, like for me to, to use this for shoulder mobility has been huge um, because um, certain techniques, and I've learned a lot of these these types of techniques from Dr. Andrew Ospina in, in his system with uh, FRC, but um, you know, it, it's, it's very complimentary um, uh, tool for you know, that training as well, but he has really interesting ways to address mobility and to regain um, function uh, in the joints. So um, to just get you know, better posture. It, there's moves that I will coach through the app that I will show people like, here's how, you know, I want your shoulders. I want them retracted, depressed. I, you know, I want your chin tucked. I want, you know, all these sort of, uh, of points. Um, I can put you in a position using the stick and then we can also turn that into an exercise where you're producing, um, this force that, um, you're basically hardwiring that now. Okay. And the lights illuminate so that someone's using it on a particular exercise over the course of time. The lights will illuminate or will it tell the app that they've reached that certain force production limit? Yeah, so both. So you get feedback from the actual lights. So what's cool is you don't really need the app um, necessarily if you know all the movements. So the device will store everything inside? Yes. Ah. Yeah, and then you can upload it later or, um, yeah, the app will actually capture that, like, you know, automatically. But, um, yeah, so it's a really cool that on the stick itself, like I wanted it to, to stand alone and I wanted people to be able to use it and just follow this, this light sequence. And, you know, this is really where, so my engineer, he's, he's brilliant. He, he just like can come up, like I can tell him all these things I want and then we, we sit and figure it out. And then he literally like in his workshop at his house, he just tinkers and he makes it. So he sounds like Archimedes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, he's, he's, he's up there, man. Like he's, he's got skills. So, um, it's been awesome. Cause like for me, like the most, I, I've done a lot of different projects and this is the one that I was like, Oh my God, I think I'm onto something. Finally, mm. you know, I feel like this is really something like everybody could benefit from, which, you know, really excites me. But the, the feedback part of it, coming back to that, um, you'll actually get, a goal target light so the, the there's a sequence where initially you make contact and then this yellow light kind of shoots out and so it's ramping up in this strength curve and so it's going to come up in the sequence and now i'm going to chase i'm going to chase it by pressing harder um, on the stick or pulling harder on the stick to meet and match where that target is and 
you know, you can exceed it, but, um, you know, the closer you are to that target, you know, the more effective, uh, whatever exercise I have prescribed for you is. Yeah. And then also the ability to control, um, you know, that central nervous system on and ramp it down slowly too. So it's not just about how much tension I can produce. Yeah. It's also, can I hold and sustain that? And can I also let off of it with control? Who would you say this is for, man? Because when I hear you speak and, and you're on, maybe you can attest to this. Some people, they get really excited about how, how novel something is, the mm. newness, the freshness, the coolness. Mm -hmm. And I look at this and I'm like, wow, it activates my inner dork. But a lot of people, <laughs> yeah. I would say like most sure. people are looking to let go of weight or get more energy. Like that's the ultimate goal they want. Sure. How does that relate to them doing one of those two things? Okay, so this is a good point because for me, I can geek out and I can over talk like, I mean, there's just so many applications that um, I can sort of get lost in like, oh, this is great for sports performance. Oh, my God. You know, yeah, like these type of people over here can benefit from it, you know, um, rehabilitation. And um, as far as like your general person, like just was, you know, something easy to focus on. Like I like to think about um, what technology has done so far and I've seen. Um, some companies do this in a, in a cool way where let's just focus on, you know, movement in, in terms of steps. Let's let's focus on maybe our heart rate. You know, let's optimize our heart rate. Let's focus on, you know, like some of these other like real basic things that, that are real like ease to entry um, type type things to accomplish. So um, this would fall into that category um, by kind of producing maybe four or five sort of staple movements throughout the day that when you think of it you grab the stick you push on it you pull on it and you get credit for it and you build off of that i mean it's as simple as that like if you yeah. did that all the time you're gonna build strength and you're gonna it's gonna keep ramping up and building and building and you can you can tangibly see that and your numbers will increase and in that you, you'll see how that will translate into your motivation, into your energy, into wanting to do more, um, you know, rigorous activities. Um, but, you know, for me, if I can get people to just start by doing like, you know, three or four things every day um, consistently and build upon that just very slowly, uh, it'll be enormous. It'll be a huge deal. I can't think of how many clients and, you know, maybe people that start a nutrition journey, they try to do 10 things all at once. Mm -hmm. And then when too many things try to change, nothing ever changes. Right. So I believe that it's like you said, picking maybe one thing, one thing, one thing, there you go. one movement, the squat, whatever it is. Sure. How does that relate? You're on to nutrition when people are looking at changing their nutrition for the better for the long term. How, how does that first step look like? What have you seen the data reflect? I mean, since we're at this intersection of data and behavior change, like what data is actually yielding what types of behavior change from a nutritional standpoint? Yeah, super interesting. It's a really huge, Great massively question. loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> Take your time. Go ahead and solve yeah. the world's problems quickly. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's a great question. It applies to all of health and fitness and it's specifically nutrition. Um, you see a lot of people who are trying to make these huge changes in their lifestyles that are typically not sustainable. It's very, very difficult to completely change your lifestyle, eat completely differently, you know, the next day um, uh, while maintaining it for, for say, multiple years. Um, so one of the things that we noticed that work much better, and this is something that you guys uh, know much better than I do, um, is that making actually uh, smaller changes is typically more sustainable so as you make a small change, you feel like you're succeeding. If this small change is a change that is actually uh, helping you feel better, that you can actually measure uh, in, in one way or another uh, how this change affects your body in a positive way, uh, then even more, more so, uh, you feel successful, you feel better about that change, and then it, it's easier to implement more changes in your, in your diet plan, in your nutrition. Um, and those are typically the kind of things that work better for the long term. Um, in terms of like the behavioral change aspect, so I, I'm, I'm a big fan and an and advocate of the use of uh, continuous glucose monitors uh, for nutrition. I can't wait to try this I out. I know, man, I've been <laughs> yeah. wanting to. I can't wait to try this out. Um, yeah. So we, um, one of the things that we noticed, and just 
I mean, for the record, we, we do not sell continuous glucose monitors, right? My company is a software company. Yeah. Mm. Uh, we work with continuous glucose monitor manufacturers. Um, and uh, They're on your platform, right? Uh, yeah. They are, yeah. correct. Um, Dexcom? So there are three devices, three companies that manufacture uh, these devices. It's uh, Medtronic, uh, Dexcom, and uh, Abbott Diabetes. Um, and our platform can use data from all three of them. Uh, we also have a very, uh, very good partnership with Medtronic. We'll launch with them uh, the footprint for people who are living with diabetes uh, about a year ago and got unbelievable clinical outcomes already, like real world evidence of outcomes mm. regarding like reduction of hypoglycemia. And a part of it is actually related to, um, to what you're mentioning which is uh, the ability of people to actually visualize and see how it is that different foods affect them. Okay, so all of a sudden, you're, you're used to eating a, a, like in a certain way, and all of a sudden, every time you eat a meal, uh, you know, a few hours afterwards, you can actually see the respond, or sometimes in real time, you can actually see the respond of that meal on your body. Right, it's only one biomarker, but mm -hmm. it's a very important biomarker, so glucose. That's yeah. a powerful uh, one. And, yeah. uh, and the result, it's, it's fascinating. First of all, there is a huge variability between people. So if you and I will eat the same things, we're going to yes. see different responses. Man, this is exactly <laughs> what Rob yeah. Wolf talked about in his book. Yeah, in his book, Wired. And Wired so to eat, Wired yeah. to Eat, he did 30 days of like a very kind of squeaky uh, clean paleo diet. But then he did a seven-day carb test. Mm -hmm. And he documented this on Instagram with his wife. His wife ate rice. He ate rice. I think he had like a 125 or like 130 glucose. And then same thing with cookies and bananas. So one person can eat fruit or starches <laughs> and it'll affect them. Turns the glycemic index on his head. 50 huh? points difference. <laughs> so we're all unique. Everybody's got this thumbprint on the outside. We are metabolically unique on the inside as well. Yep. And yeah. so this, it's how does the data reflect that? And do you ever think in any way that data will drive our decisions from a virtual coach? Mm. I'm absolutely sure the data will drive our decisions yes. eventually. Uh, <laughs> working towards that uh that goal uh, i th i hope this day will come you know uh close uh sooner than later uh but you can actually see this happening so from i mean the data ref you can see fascinating things in the data and i'll just you know give you some examples uh, you can see individuals who are eating things like chocolate or ice cream which barely affects their glucose levels and you're like when you look at that you're like that there, that there must have been a mistake. There yeah. must have been a mistake, for right? That, right. Uh, but then you actually see that the data is consistent. If a certain certain individuals, when they eat, say, I, I'm actually uh, I'm I'm lucky enough to be able to eat uh, dark chocolate without it. Ber basically, almost doesn't affect my glucose. Wow, kind of hate nice. you. Kind of <laughs> hate them a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, I think that's. The, the variability between people uh, is one of the most uh, fascinating things there. And it plugs in from, you know, eat, move, and sleep. So movement with the axon, quantifying progress. Boom. Eating with neutrino and with CGM, quantifying progress. Sleep with possibly the aura ring. I noticed that you brought one. Yeah. Um, I'm actually going to have uh, either Harpreet or their CEO on the show because I love what this ring is doing. I've been using the Blaze for a long time. Okay. Uh, and we kind of dorked out a little bit in yeah. person on this. Yep. I, I think that a watch isn't for everyone, mm -hmm. uh, especially women. Like women don't like wearing these big microwaves with a strap on their wrist. <laughs> you know? so, so what do you we both feel like? You were talking about that spaceship one earlier. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so what do you guys feel? I mean, popcorn, it, like what is going to be the thing that will really fit everyone or does everyone need their own unique thing like the aura ring? Mm. Ooh, I think watch. accessorizing <laughs> first, yeah. right? Like, I think like, you know, actually embedding chips and things like that. Like that's, that's way beyond, like, uh, I think like just to get everybody sort of comfortable for a while, like it's still going to look a lot like jewelry or, you know, something else like on your clothes or, you yeah. know, so, like they're going to get real creative, uh, you know, first from that angle. Plus, you know, you can, you can develop cool products that way, but uh, yeah, Definitely all the sensors are coming up with now. It's very cool because it's not like back when they first kind of introduced a lot of these things. It was like a lot of manual uh, entries and, and like I had to tell, uh, you know, the whatever device like this is like how many steps I actually did. And yeah. you actually had to plug that in. So I think that we've come like a really far away, really fast. Yeah. Uh, with all these sensors, so it's gonna be interesting. Don't you guys also feel like the more user inputs, AKA the less seamless it is for the person, 
the more complicated and more progressive the software has to be. Oh my God. Because, because <laughs> making it seamless, right? And you know this from the Thanks. Axon, maybe. Yes. Yeah. Make it, uh, making it I'm seamless. I'm glad to be around people that do understand that. Someone yeah. might be like, oh, just turn on a lever so that it'll upload my stuff automatically. What they don't realize is It's taking is too long to download. Yeah, like, there's 624 lines of code you have to write for that one change, right? So yeah. <laughs> I think that's the hard part. Oh, um, but what do you guys see for the Dream Dashboard here? Like, is it mm. gonna be something where we're putting in activity data, blood glucose data, U-biome data, getting everything from any kind of test portal that we can mm -hmm. to where then we have an algorithm and an AI that coaches us and we get to name our coach and they walk us through our day. I mean, do you believe that's what it's gonna be? I think that's exactly how it's gonna be. So yeah. already today, um, one of the things that Neutrino is doing is providing like a personalized meal plans for individuals uh, depending on all of those uh, data streams that I mentioned before. So taking into account people's profiles and, and providing like complete customization on every single aspect from taste, food allergies, dietary needs, and also obviously people's footprints, how they actually respond to foods. Uh, and we like to do this coaching. I mean, we are focusing on nutrition. So we do like meal plans, grocery lists, uh, personalized menus from restaurants, uh, healthy tips depending on your footprint and so on. Uh, but I think that the day is not very far until this happens, like, like kind of like universally across healthcare. Mm. Dan uh, Party has created Human OS, which I've mentioned, I think, to both of you. I'm not sure. Yeah. And he's tying in a lot of proactive data around ancestral health and basic movement and living patterns mm. with QS. So bringing in the data and the natural primal living. Oh, now there's wow. two schools of thought here because Mark Sisson is very anti-technology, right? I was gonna say we, we butted heads on the Wellness Force yeah. show because he was like, well, "Why do I need a device to technology? It's just to like, tell ah. me what to do." And it's like <laughs> because we live in an age of technology. I understand your argument in the past, mm. but we don't live why in that do we world live anymore. In houses? Yeah. 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 Like, and it's the very same killing beasts outside then it's yeah. the very same people that like might use their smartphone and get amazon go to deliver organic lettuce that might say i don't need a tracker to track my steps well it's like <laughs> we're well, already using technology in some way yeah so what do you think justin like how do we transcend people's negativity around tech wow that's a good question yeah i think i think just like man the, the more education that we can put out there um as far as like what's coming out and you know the advancements that you know a lot of people i think that there's a lot of synergy right now behind um people that are in the health and wellness industry that are like how can we how can we reach more people how can we get our voice louder because uh, it's been so much um just shenanigans that people i think they don't trust a lot of the information that's being fed to them constantly on it. Facebook and, you know, the, the, these social channels and there's still a lot of shucksters out there. So um, I think that once once people realize um, who's legit, who's not, and they kind of feel comfortable about, you know, the message behind it, I think there's going to be a lot more acceptance with a lot of these techniques because they are they are reaching you in a different way. They're providing metrics that you can get more insight about yourself. Like, it, it, you know, if, if you go into any program, any anybody that's coaching you, what do they have you do first? Track everything. They want you to know, uh, you know, what you're doing, whether you're journaling. Um, but the, the more you know about yourself, uh, the more power you have as a person. And that's just something that technology helps to like increase it, it increases and expands on you know, how much you know about yourself and it, it it's all about how you use it you know to your benefit and you shut it off when you need to shut it off but you know you pay attention to the right metrics and um, so I think it's the right dosage for sure I think that people yeah. need to find the right dosage for it and shut off all the unnecessary technology and I understand the pushback too because it's like well, people have been living for millennia. Why do we need quote, quote, technology to tell us what to do for our health behaviors? I truly believe it's because we are not in that land anymore. Like the land has fully 180 flipped. Mm -hmm. We use technology more than we ever have in our entire lives. And I don't know if it's ever going to be the same ever again. Actually, I do know it's not going to be yeah, the same ever not. again. Yeah. So, so adapting to this and understanding, like, let's go over some of these devices because I think people will get a lot of value specifically out of this device for the power dot it's muscle stem. And if you've ever done muscle stem, it's so relaxing. It increases blood flow. It decreases lactic acid. 
but that's a great device. The one next to it, though, I'm going to interview. This is actually um, an investor in this company is Tom Bilyeu, who I know you've interviewed on Mind right, Pump. Yeah. And this is Neurovalence. Great business mind. And so this goes on the head kind of like this. And then you attach the leads on the back and they go right on your vestibular nerve. Mm. And that's uh, essentially, I haven't tried it for more than three days here, but we're looking at technology down regulating people's bad habits. So if somebody's stressed out <laughs> and they're that's having so all these, and they're having like a lack of leptin signaling, which is like that full signal, and they have too much ghrelin and they're not sleeping enough, mm -hmm. do you guys feel like something, if this was clinically proven, would be something that you would personally use in your lives? I would definitely experiment with it. Yeah. I mean, if it does what it says it does and um, you know, that's the thing. Like there's so many things coming out that are like getting more insight about how the brain operates and, and how much of your health is determined by your brain functioning properly and being healthy yeah. and all those like connections are, are made. And so, it, you know, if that's just another way to enhance that process, at least to learn it, you know, at least to teach my brain uh, to create this pattern and, and that wasn't there before, you know, I'm open to it. So do you meditate? I do. What, I, do I just any? started. Um, you know what? I actually use Wim Hof's techniques. Oh yeah. So I'll do that with my wife and it's been really helpful. Have you ever passed out? No. Okay. No, but I've cried? gotten, uh, I cried no. pretty hard at the at Mark Devine's <laughs> But I definitely lost retreat. my body for a minute. Okay. Yeah. 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 You can transcend through breath. I mean, breath is like weird. one of the most powerful things. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, Euron, if you've ever done anything from a tracking perspective and wellness and mindfulness or breathing. I Has, do, yeah. What I, do you do? I do meditation and yoga. So meditation. Yeah, he's <laughs> enlightened. Do you, quanti sure. <laughs> do, you <quantify? laughs> do you quantify your enlightenment or you just uh, move towards the path of enlightenment? Just move, I just move towards the path of enlightenment out of the dark side. <laughs> I feel like for me, it's good. I don't know if you guys can relate to this. You know, when something's tracked and I can see over the course of time, like when I notice my meditation and I'm in my alpha two brainwave, which is that calm state uh, through the muse, I just feel better about it. I like feel better about myself. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about the, the construct of putting these external frameworks of these mirrors of mindfulness mm. that just remind you and guide you along the way? Do you think that that's going to be something that will apply to all people at some point? Mm. Well, to go back to, you know, meditation practices, like the way that um, I forget, I think it was like Sal's girlfriend that, that kind of mentioned this, but it was an interesting thought that I'm really I'm creating space that way. A lot of times, you know, we're, our input and our stimulus, like we're just getting so much. We're getting bombarded with uh, this excess of, of, you know, constant stimulation. And to create space again, um, you know, it's energizing, it's peaceful, it's, it, it, it really helps to sort of uh, balance it out. And, um, it, and it just sounds so basic of a concept that people – I guess, you know, once you actually focus on it, you reap the benefits from it. So th I thought that was, you know, once I once I kind of I'm really, you know, more of a performance minded guy. So it, like that, it took me a long time to get to where I could meditate uh, because I'm you know go, 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 go. I want to yeah. I want to crush the day. Yeah. And, you know, it's that athletic athletic mind that I've always had where I'm just like, you know, I got to meet the challenge and do, do, do all the stuff. But you can't do meditation you know like you can't like you have to re like release <laughs> and i had to learn that and that was something I, that was like a foreign object to me so. i think what you're saying is exactly the reason why we're in a different land uh back in the day when you didn't have to meditate people just would yeah because yeah, it right. there was nothing going on yeah, yeah there, there was no meditation <laughs> weekends that you know yeah. the, the pasanas weren't that old because people just knew that that was most important to refuel the body, to sleep, to let the mind sleep. And um, Doc Parsley talked about this, creating a barrier from your environment. Mm. That's what real true sleep is. So how do you think tech can help us create a barrier? I'm curious about this. Like what mm. tech out there can block our distraction because attention is the new currency. So mm. how, can we, how can we save our attention for ourselves using tech? I mean, I know there's apps like Retimer and things like this to help us. Right, with, to shut off. Yeah. To shut off. So, you know, I, I don't know. I, I wanted to throw it out there because this is a cool discussion around this wellness and technology and just like being a better human. Yeah. Can we all just be better humans, please? Yeah, let's <laughs> I think do that's that. what we're trying yeah. to do. It's, it's better to live with better humans, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think that generally technology that would help you, you know, we're talking about quantifying all these different things. 
if you can in any way, and I was using an app, I don't remember the name, but to try and measure how many times I check my emails a day, which is like hundreds. Mm. <laughs> Man, I like don't even want to <laughs> look at that data. <laughs> Little dopamine hits. <laughs> <laughs> like all day. Exactly. So w like when, <laughs> uh, if technology could also quantify uh, what it is that we do with technology that we don't necessarily have to do, it doesn't necessarily serve the interests mm. of all the companies uh, out there, but uh, some for sure. Um, then that could be a way of uh, helping us, you know, get more peace and quiet. And sort of weeding out all the unnecessary usage. Yep. Yeah, I like that. If they could figure that out, like what is optimal and what to focus on, you know, throughout your day. Yeah. That would be interesting. But there is, I think there is very little happening uh, in that direction. I, have, I, I haven't think so too. Much. They all want to get you hooked, I think. That's <laughs> the, the goal right Great now, word. Right? Uh, that brings up Nir Ayal. He's the author of Hooked, uh, mm. Habit Forming Products. Mm -hmm. And I remember from the interview, you know, it's funny. We all go through our journeys. Like, you know, you're on, you formed Neutrino through your mm. journey. I formed Wellness Force. I let go of like 80 pounds. Mm. Um, I know you've had transformations in your life. Mm -hmm. He had a transformation where the very thing he taught is the exact, th it's the exact thing he's learning. Hmm. And the thing he's learning was as I became more busy and as I became a speaker and popular, I was on my phone more. I was actually doing the things that I was lecturing on people not to do. Yeah. And that's how he figured out his hooked model. Yeah. Um, it can easily happen. And it can easily happen. So, you know, this, this way that technology can like distract us from the current moment, I think this is the most important thing. Beyond any tool we have, it's the intention behind the tool. If the intention's not mm -hmm. pure, or if we're just using the tech because it's cool or, or whatever it might be, mm -hmm. uh, that's actually going to be, I think, way more harmful than not using tech at all. Yeah, if and it's distracting and it's not really benefiting you and you're not utilizing what its intent is. Because at the end of the day, like people are trying to let go of weight, be healthier, what it is. Technology, I believe, will continue to increase. All these apps, everybody's got apps, everybody's got yep. devices. They're all attacking our attention bank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. how, do, how do we spend that attention on ourselves? I, I think it's through having life practices where we might use the very same technology that could distract us to keep us fulfilled, to keep us confident on what we're actually doing. Uh, do you guys have key apps or devices? I mean, obviously you're pretty partial to the Axon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, a little but bit. do you have anything besides the Axon that's really made an impact for you in staying present and just being in the moment? Hmm. Being present. Well, I, I was about to wrap off a bunch of fitness apps. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> present when you're working out, right? Yeah. Well, just just tracking wise, like, I mean, uh, a fat secret was one of them just that gives you a little more insight as to, you know, macronutrient breakdowns and you know, just, just overall, just, you know, the list of what, um, was available. It's just, it, it's impressive to me, you know, and, and you're on, um, just like to, to, to look through like what they've got as far as like data now, it's just like, they're pulling from all these restaurants. Like it's, it's so, it's so awesome to see, cause you can really pre-plan, um, anywhere you go, like, you, you know, like at this restaurant, like if you have certain conditions or, um, you know, like I have to, I have to like have certain types of foods. Like I can really find it, you know, effectively now. So, you know, apps like that, that, that help you sort of strategize better about your, your eating habits and your schedule when you're traveling. And, um, that's been really helpful. Brain FM has been uh, a real impactful app for me. Um, and, and I use, what's interesting is like, I'm, I gravitate immediately to the focus program that's on there because I, uh, I just love, um, I, I mean, I, I drink a lot of coffee, so, um, coffee is so much fun. I, I just love the stimulants, <laughs> so you know, much fun. <laughs> <laughs> so that was like my initial thing. I was like, Oh man, this is so awesome for yeah. that. And then I, I realized I was like, I should probably be doing like guided meditation yeah. or, you know, try, I try out the sleep, um, in the sleep I'm still kind of working through, but the meditation has been game changer for me. Um, and just to, to be able to, um, have a little bit of a guidance, uh, a guided experience with that, um, as well as the breathing that I mentioned earlier. Um, really for me being so driven, driven, driven to, to produce, um, the biggest game, game changers are slowing down, being mindful, all those types of, of apps and practices that I can incorporate. Mm. I actually got Brain FM. I remember Adam mentioned it. We we're in Austin and I used it. And I think I worked for two hours one day and I forgot I was working. Mm. just from having it on because it's music mixed with binaural beats yeah. yeah which i can't think of something more cool to listen to right yeah. because i get when i work um i get distracted if i know the song 
I'll start singing start along singing with the song. With you lose thought. Um, yeah. And, and so from a behavior change standpoint, you know, there's all these tools and everything. I think it's just really about people taking a breath and saying, hey, which one feels right? Like, which one do I want to explore? Mm -hmm. uh, because there's no have to. You don't have to use any of this stuff. No, no. Give it a fair shot. You know, like if it interests you, like it, go for it. It's like put on the sweater, see if it itches. And these data sets that we see around people trying on their sweaters with uh, Neutrino, it's an app company that has an app, but it's not really an app company. It's more of a data aggregate company. This is what you shared with me. And whether people use devices or not, data that is collected through these continuous glucose monitors and, and, and different pieces, like what does that actually mean for the long term of public health policy? How do we use data to drive public health policy, which will really do what mm. we're all here for, which is to affect massive change for millions of wow, people. Now we're talking about oh, digital I, health. I love this question. Yeah. <laughs> I'm prepping. Uh, yeah, so I think kind of like for us, you know, I was talking before about like solving or trying to help solve the problem of conflicting nutritional advice. A big part of it is not only, obviously not only consumers and not only food companies and not only the healthcare industry. There is, there are a lot of different pieces and, uh, and two very important parts of, um, of, the, of this entire puzzle are uh, professionals. So we're talking about nutritionists, dietitians, can also be uh, trainers. Uh, and the other one is researchers. And today, um, it's fairly difficult to actually do nutrition research. And that's one of the reasons why nutrition, w I mean, one of the many reasons why nutrition is such a mess. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very difficult to collect a lot of data on individuals. These kind of studies are extremely expensive. Um, and uh, I would love to see Neutrino uh, facilitating the work of researchers also to uh, use all the data that we gathered, obviously anonymously, um, and and the tools and the different analytical tools to help researchers understand how different food affect people, and and use that afterwards um, in in public policy eventually when the time comes. Mm. But it's like kind of like a long term goal. And stay pure and not evil, right? Because uh, <laughs> you, you've had like food companies and, you know, yeah. like some people. Cause Please do not partner with Coca Cola. That's what I'm do saying, not, though. Like he's got integrity. Uh, and, you know, that's what I immediately, another thing that drew me to, you know, to Iran and, and what he's doing with his company. It's just like there's that temptation there because you can make a ton of money uh with those type that type of data yeah. and and to be able to market like certain food groups within the app and um really focus on supplements for over here for this um, um that they'll pair and match you you best but you know that's that's something that uh you know you're gonna have to go through you know all those things and and <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> remain <our> pure <laughs> yeah. yeah our interest is really people's health and to try and help people as much as we can um so we we will um you know stick to to our ethics for for that purpose how do you think that the policies will be adjusted because right now the john john hancock insurance company has a radical plan where they're giving people money back at the end of the year if they hit step counts if they hit other biomarker counts awesome. that's pretty cool yeah. i mean that's as proactive as it gets right now but with your company with getting continuous glucose monitor information and with getting really radically progressive information, I could see that affecting the bottom line of insurance companies, the bottom line of wellness programs for corporations. I mean, what's your vision for that? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that in general, there is a lot of value in measuring all the things that we are measuring uh, for a lot of people, not only for individuals who are trying to understand their, their bodies. Uh, one of the challenges is really to find a way to do so that is a win-win for everybody. I mean, you're talking about the insurance companies, but they're also, um, I mean, there is also the, like the healthcare industry uh, as a whole and also the individuals. It's very important for us to stay, um, uh, to try and, uh, and help them as much as we can. Uh, so I don't think there is a short and simple answer to this question, yeah. unfortunately. Mm. But uh we're still uh, trying to assess uh, where where do all the pieces fit in a way that is a win-win for everybody. I think yeah. the parts that I'm most curious about as a podcast host, sometimes I lob onto my guest. I'm like, yeah, so how yeah, do we yeah, solve yeah. this world's problem? <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, well, uh, there's no actual clear uh, answer yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah. We're working on all those things. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's wrap it with the future then. What do you guys feel for the future? What do you think, you know, sitting here a year from now, what's it going to be like? Mm. To, to integrate all these devices into a dashboard um, and to really live your life, not depending on the tech, but just using the tech so you can enhance your experience. Mm. I, 
I definitely see the gym setting evolve yeah. uh, quite a bit. And um, also just just more people doing it at their house, doing it in their backyard, having the freedom to um, really enjoy life and and not treat it as much of a workout as it's it's OK. Now's the time where I'm enhancing my muscles. Now's the time where I'm, you know, working on flexibility or I'm doing my steps or there's just a lot of freedom with that. And, um, you know, I feel like there's this, this old dinosaur mentality that, that it still pervades, you know, the fitness industry. And I'm just I'm waiting for that moment where all these disruptive technologies are going to infiltrate and people are going to realize that like, oh, wow, like I can work out, but I can have fun doing it. And I don't really have to think, you know, as hard about it. Like I'm I know that what I'm doing is benefiting my body because all these metrics are reliable. You know, this is something that's tangible to me. I, and it just simplifies because I think your average person like that's going into, um, you know, hire a trainer or maybe they're not hiring a trainer. That's a great first step is to hire a trainer. But, um, you know, just going into the gym and um, looking around and looking at weights and looking at machines. And I mean, it's a, it's a real daunting thing. And, um, you know, there's a lot of research and all that that they should be going through kind of getting into the process. But um, we like, you know, what, what our company and, and, you know, what we're doing on our podcast and we're just trying to simplify um, that entire experience for somebody to um, easily just immerse themselves in it and, and like immediately reap the benefit from it. So uh, I just feel like it's going to simplify everything. And so it's like it's literally your decision to not live healthy. Like you, you're hmm. like, it's all there right Dude, in front I of you. I love that so much. <laughs> yeah. I love that was such a beautiful sentence. Thank you. <laughs> and, and it reminds me of like why orange theory fitness is doing so well mm -hmm. It's because they've made it fun. Yeah. It, it's like, it's just fun. It's you, party come in in, yeah. you, you track your heart rate, you track your, your workout points, you get to gamify it. Uh, it's using tech in that way. It's bringing people back home, man. Yeah. Which is like community enjoying yourself mm -hmm. with other humans and sweating novel concept. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. um, from, from a nutritional standpoint, what do you think you're on? Like, what would this look like? I think that uh, in the coming year, we're going to see a lot of new wearable devices measuring new things, first of all, in terms of biomarkers. So things like antioxidants, maybe other uh, biomarkers from the blood, triglycerides and others. Um, I think that so, so I, I I do a lot of I give a lot of talks on AI and a lot of the work that we do in, in, in Neutrino is related to machine learning and AI, most of the work actually. Um, so I suspect I, I, I believe that uh, we will see the world of AI and deep learning and so on really penetrating into this world of digital health and specifically nutrition. And there's going to be a lot of very exciting things coming up. So for the first time, we will see a lot of a lot more intelligence in a lot of these services and products that will really make our lives easier in terms of uh, decision making around nutrition and uh, also in general when it comes to uh, to health. Um, yeah, and I'm excited about the what's coming next. It's, it's yep. so incredible. Weird. It's so amazing. And I look at five years ago, I actually made fun of my girlfriend who was wearing a Fitbit. Five years, oh, yeah. five oh, years ago, yeah. I was like, that's silly. Why would you need a step tracker to tell you what to do? Mm -hmm. And then I started to go through my journey and, and you know everything that I was doing from a responsibility standpoint. And I started to see and feel the benefits of what it would be like to have a life that was just guided and helped and supported by tech. Mm -hmm. And so I've definitely felt that. And on the Fitness Tech Show, my other podcast, we talked to all these club owners and these fitness leaders and people that are in the industry really making the decisions, I mean, on the bleeding edge mm -hmm. of change. And they're all trying to connect these dots. And I think we've connected some of them today mm -hmm. in a really cool way. So thank you guys. This yeah. has been so much fun. Um, tell people where they can learn more about Axon and the Kickstarter. Sure. Yeah, you can go to axonfit.com and uh, and then that'll there'll be a link on there so it can take you to the campaign. And uh, yeah, so we'll you can check us out on Kickstarter. There's there's videos um, kind of showing uh, different usages of it, and I help to explain uh, the actual product a little bit more there. So, um, and then also um, you can check out our, our podcast at uh, Mind Pump and uh, MindPumpMedia.com, and uh, we also have you know fitness programs that are digital on there as well that uh, you know will cater to all kinds of different uh, uh, pursuits. And also check out the amazing demos. Um, Justin's going to wear a tank top 
and then demonstrate oh, yeah. for the axon. <laughs> okay. That's our video sure series for coming sure. up next. Yeah. All day. <laughs> um, but and then tell us about Neutrino, where people can go. It's Neutrino.co. Correct. Yeah. So uh, you can f uh, read and learn more about us on uh, Neutrino.co. Uh, Neutrino is N-U-T-R-I-N-O. Uh, we also have apps both of on uh, iOS and Android uh, called the Footprint by Neutrino that you can uh, download and play with. Um, and uh, we're actually preparing a lot of very exciting uh, new features uh, for everybody that will really remove a lot of the burden around uh, around nutrition in general. So that very sounds exciting. so good. Yeah. That sounds like so much fun. I know. He's keeping secrets from yeah. us. <laughs> I have yeah. to. <laughs> thanks, guys. Hey, thanks for having me in the Mind Pump studio. This is like my dream studio. I love yeah. this place. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's been so, rad. Okay. Until next time, love and wellness. Thank <laughs> you.